Voxel space is a rendering technique patented by Novologic that involves using height maps and color maps in unison with a simple engine to render a 3D voxel based world and was used in the Comanche franchise. This GitHub page by Sebastian Mack goes through a basic tutorial of this algorithm, so if you're interested you should check it out. Now for the basic rundown. To get this to work you need two maps, a color map and a height map. We store the player's position, height, and rotation in a class, and then we use those values to calculate rows on the maps. You get the left and right end of each row from the camera. You use those values to calculate the step size between each voxel, and then you're finally able to loop through the horizontal size of the screen to calculate the line color and height. With that out of the way, let's start the implementation. Now the performance of this algorithm on modern hardware should be absolutely incredible, but because I'm using Python, it will probably end up taking until Pangea reunites to render the first frame. Now for the first trial of this engine. We got the line height values wrong. Now for the first trial of this engine. And it's already running at one second per frame. You seriously cannot make this stuff up. To understand why it's running so slow, other than the fact that it's written in Python, is because of this. Did you catch that? It's drawing over the lines every frame because it's being rendered back to front. This is a catastrophic blunder in the world of graphics programming because drawing is a very performance intensive task, especially when handled with the CPU. If instead we made a buffer that stores the Y position of each vertical strip, we can render front to back, drastically reducing the amount of drawing that needs to happen. As you can see, this is about three times better than the previous method. Now in terms of frames per second, three still blows chunks. Fortunately, I don't care enough to fix this at this point in time, so I can just ignore it. Do you ever struggle with coming up with new coding projects and actually finishing them? Well then you should check out CodeCrafters.io. They offer an array of coding challenges like building your own Git, Docker, Shell, and more in 18 of the greatest programming languages and Java. There is usually a free programming challenge available if you want to give it a try. If you're interested, use my link in the description to support my channel. I added a basic movement system using some more trigonometry, which ends up looking like I'm presenting a PowerPoint at an impressive pace. Now our camera is looking a bit nearsighted at the moment, so if we just change the render distance, it's optimization time. One optimization that is recommended by the GitHub page is to add level of detail, which means to decrease the amount of detail rendered further away. This means we decrease the precision of rendering by increasing the step size the farther the row gets rendered. Now between these two clips you can tell that we've doubled our speed. Now this optimization comes at the cost of these little deformities. But I'm concerned with speed and none of this ultra high definition realistic look. On that note, let's crank down the resolution. I have also added an easy class based map system so it's easier to interchange maps. We can implement fog by interpolating the pixel color with a fog color based on the distance from the camera. This removes the sharp edge where the render distance ends and really ties the visuals together I think. I really like how this fits the feel of the environment and puts a feeling of comfort within the users. One of the main problems with raycasters is the lack of multiple rotation axes. To get around this, we can just add the Y position of the pixels with some up-down rotation angle to make a semi-normal looking... looking system. Another optimization I was thinking of is to half the amount of calculated lines after a certain distance away, and then doubling the width of the lines. 
This improved the frames per second by a whopping three. Three extra frames per second. Perfect. On an unrelated note, please leave optimization ideas in the comments, and refrain from mentioning parallel processing or I'll find you. Finally, instead of creating a full skybox like in my ray tracer, I've created a gradient of color that moves with the up-down look system to create a fast sky system. And with all of that, we have created a pretty underwhelming voxel engine. Later on, I plan to optimize the engine more, maybe allow for some overhanging voxels and potentially make a few games with it. Again, if you are interested, check out CodeCrafters.io in the description. Stay tuned for another video in a few months.